Hey, what's up everyone? Raging Golden Eco here, having way too much fun as always. And I definitely was not expecting to get back to this topic again. But dang, considering the information that came out around Christmas, I've not been able to catch a break. People are constantly bombarding me with messages about what's going on. My previous video on the topic has just been exploding again, so I keep getting notifications about that too. So okay, fine, fine, I'll talk about it. You have been heard. It turns out that, funny enough, right on Christmas Day, news came out that the World Health Organization plans on officially listing gaming disorder as a mental condition. Now let's see what they have to say. In what can only be described as a sign of the times, the World Health Organization has recognized a new kind of mental health condition. It's a familiar ailment, although some of us may be slow to call it a mental condition. It's called gaming disorder and it's characterized by a pattern of persistent or reoccurring gaming behavior. Or more simply, an addiction to gaming. Which is actually kind of funny because the last time I talked about this, using these people's own statistics, even nowadays people spend way less time gaming than watching TV. And yet last I checked, I haven't seen a push to list uh, being addicted to watching TV as a mental disorder. Same thing with social media addiction for that matter. But that's fine though, we all know the real reason here, it's all political. As a bunch of other people have already been pointing out, this is most likely just because of pressure from Asian governments. Hell, over there in Asia they even have camps to help people get over their internet addiction or gaming addiction or whatever. And by camps I mean glorified prison. So if I was to bet on the reason for why the World Health Organization is doing this, it will probably be that, just pressure from East Asian governments. Now right now, this is just in the beta draft of the update, but it's most likely going to make it in, we're not going to be kidding ourselves here. But this part here is pretty funny too. The World Health Organization also notes that those who prioritize video games over other life interests and daily activities and continue to escalate the amount of time they play despite the occurrence of negative consequences are also showing symptoms of the newly classified disorder. Man, I gotta love that wording right there, don't you? So just because you prefer video games over other hobbies or ways of spending your free time, you might be addicted to gaming now, huh? But again, not a single peep about being addicted to watching TV and people in America nowadays still watch way more TV than they play video games. At this point, I'm entirely convinced that they're only trying to go after like the uh, small fraction of a percent of people that are legitimately addicted to the point that it costs them their jobs and whatnot. But it's hardly fair to single out gaming in that case because people are, can get addicted to literally anything to that degree. But again, because of pressure from Asian governments and the fact that there's been all these moral panics about gaming, oh, well, gotta single them out. Though you know what, now that I think about it, I'm not even gonna consider this a bad thing. Hell, if I can go on disability and sit at home and play video games all day, where do I sign up, man? I'm gonna have to look into that here in the future. Though in the very next paragraph, they do kind of confirm what I just said. They seem to only be targeting the extreme outliers here. The behavior pattern is of sufficient severity to result in significant impairment in personal, family, social, educational, occupational, or other important areas of functioning, the draft reads. The gaming behavior and other features are normally evident over a period of at least 12 months in order for a diagnosis to be assigned, although the required duration may be shortened if all diagnostic requirements are met and symptoms are severe. So basically what I'm getting from all of this is that about the only people that are ever going to be getting diagnosed with this are kids whose parents take them to a psychiatrist or something because of their gaming. And that's it. If a full-grown adult is sitting at home playing games all day, who's going to make him get a psychological evaluation? Unless we're talking about the stereotypical basement dweller, I guess. In that case, his mom may still do it. And on top of that, there's the fact that not every single health organization out there agrees with the World Health Organization. The American Psychiatric Association, for instance, doesn't recognize it. So for those of you who are paranoid and think they're all going to come and take our games or something, I wouldn't be too worried about that yet. Maybe a decade or two in the future it may get to that point, but right now, not going to happen. So in the end, my only real big issue with this is why are they singling out gaming? Yeah, sure, there is a pretty extreme outlier that probably needs to get help, but that could be covered under a, a generic addiction definition. Because I've seen people get just as addicted to reading books and watching TV. But then again, this is just the normal pattern, isn't it? The newest, most popular form of media at the time is always what's being blamed for all of society's ills. 
That's how it's always been. That's how it always will be. Books and TV were being blamed for everything in the past too. So now it's gaming's turn. And just like every single time this has happened in the past, we just gotta wait it out. We don't have to win this fight, we just have to outlast the other side. Which we're gonna do by default because in the next couple of decades they're all gonna be dead. And when that happens, maybe we can then start discussing the real problems, as opposed to just more of this fear-mongering. That's all I gotta say guys, thanks for listening.